Okay, so in this workshop, uh, Claire Marie will be looking at choosing great books in Irish, encouraging young readers to read for pleasure in Irish, and activities in the classroom and at home. Uh, Claire is the head of the Department of English and the Department of Irish in Marino Institute of Education. She is the former Irish language editor of Inish Magazine and Children's Books Ireland Reading Guide as well. And she's also part of the Book Doctor team. She's one of our book doctors uh, with Irish uh, who, who, form, uh, who uh, does her book doctor pieces, Oscar Elga. So with that, I'll hand over to you, Claire, if that's okay. Yeah, Kirby and Michael Funnel, and uh, it's great that both of you turned up for uh, this tonight, and hopefully other people can tune in on YouTube at a, a later date. Uh, this is the second in this series, Jeff and Scott. So I'm going to be looking at some different books and some different ideas, but ultimately uh, ways to get children interested in reading in Irish, because there are lots of great resources actually out there um, at the moment. These are my key messages for tonight. They wish Ray Lave, let's get ready to read. Harry and Lara Gray get in full of Queen Dow and more. Reading in Irish helps us to learn about the world around us. It's Lehori critical in which we are critical readers and we have critical literacy. It's Gaila Hamahamwad Erfad, we are great storytellers. And it's Lehamwad Ervali Aitsila, and we read in different ways. So I'll focus in on each of those things. So to get us started, being ready to read. And um, there are loads of books available in Irish, kind of, you know, uh, about that a lot from your work at CBI. And I try to combine as, as many of them as possible in this resource that's free on the COG website, and it's just been recently updated. So there are over 65 uh, books mentioned in it and ideas for how to do them in the classroom. And something that's um, becoming very important in the curriculum in the Republic of Ireland is critical literacy. There's, there's an extra section in at the end of it now on how you can use Irish language books to develop critical literacy. So I'm going to be referring to a lot of the books that are mentioned in this resource and the games and activities as well that are available in Schaefer and Scott. I started the uh, webinar the last time by saying to people that this is an important message. We're actually always reading in Irish. From the moment we leave our houses or our homes, we can see things written in Irish in lots of different places online, in our physical community, um, on, on school signs, on road signs. And this activity uh, is part of the resource Gaeta Sawalia, just to start to draw attention to the Irish you see in your everyday life. So, you know, you're actually already reading um, every single day. Then when we want to make it more um, of a really positive experience between parents and children or between um, children and other children in the classroom, these are some phrases that are useful to have maybe on the wall in the classroom or on your fridge at home um, that children and parents and other adults <clears throat> in children's lives are able to um, speak to the children about the books that they're reading. So the, their simple phrase of Lamish Lechela, Ranigir and Glutha, Uskling Ked Lahna, Kasan Lahna. And one of the things that's really important is that you're praising the children um, and showing an interest in how well they're doing in reading with simple things like Mahu and Islamert. And then the, the, the next set of questions and phrases um, are asking about the story and showing an interest in it. So these are good just um, bank of phrases to have available when you're reading any book at all. Now, um, I'm going to go through a few different strategies for how to simplify um, sometimes a story or how to build background knowledge before you start reading a story with children. Because one of the things that um, my students have said to me recently, particularly students that are going to English medium schools, is that <clears throat> they found these lovely books. But they don't think that the level is just at the right you know, kind of stage for the children that they're teaching who are not used to reading in Irish outside of school. So I'm going to go through a few different strategies you can do first to get children ready to read these books. And the first one is just about telling a simpler version of the story with Yachi. And any children's story that has any kind of journey or movement in it, it lends itself really well to doing this. So the story that I've chosen is me. I have it there in the corner. But it's a lovely story, essentially about this robot that goes up to space is taking lots of photographs of different aliens. Well, not, not getting on very well at finding the aliens in the beginning and is taking more selfies and uh, pictures of the aliens. And then a big storm happens dramatically. And then there's silence um, in space until she starts to hear this music that's been played to her. So there are four things that happen in that story. And it's easy enough to act it out uh, with the children, just saying, suis suspair le meep, glock meep greengraf, glock meep feigning, 
Honig Stirum War. And that's a part where in the class or with your group of children, you can get them to act out the storm. Going across the classroom, getting louder, starting at one end and going to the other one. The Cunis Unlon Ow. And after that, Hulamik uh, Kyo. So there are four things that happen in that story. And even if you just act those out, first of all, to show the children what's happening, then they get a sense of what is happening in the story. And even if <clears throat> that word achtron is not something they know at the moment, you'll be coming to the picture shortly and you can show them it. So after you have acted it out, <clears throat> you invite the children to do it with you. So Roshin has Katina Masmani, you can char Kunal if you want to, nobody there to judge you where you are at home. You get the children to act it out with you. Sue is to spare the meat. Glock me green graph, glock me feiny, and ach me ach is she ain't achtron. Hossig stirum all war. And then the cunis unlan aum, hula me kill. After that, you can say and get the children to do the actions while you're doing it. Then you move to half of the class, and you as teacher are telling those four parts of the story while doing the actions. One part of the class is saying with you, the other is doing the actions, and then you cross over. So then you've really built a uh, background knowledge of the four main events that are going to happen in this story and it prepares the children for when you do the picture walk. So going through the book and the beautiful illustrations in this from page to page using those four sentences and language that um, was in uh, the description of it and pointing to the things. So when you're saying Niak is she you can show that they're hidden there below it. So going through the picture walk, you know, you don't have to speak about every single page, but highlighting those four main things that happen. It. The next activity that's nice to do is lay a leaning. Um, <clears throat> and you can choose again those four main parts of the story. And on the board or on a piece of paper, you divide it into four parts. And you're going to tell those four parts of the story again as you draw. Now, I'm not no artist, but I'm going to show you the one that I briefly put together before this. So they're very basic illustrations, as you can see. But as I'm telling the story in the first one, Suis the Fair Limip, and I draw it. And then the next one, um, Glock Meep Greengraf, all these photos are being taken on her phone. Um, I was Glock Meep Fainy, Achniak is she Then this is a cloud blowing a big stormy wind at people. Um, Hossig Thurum, uh, Olivor, making the noises. The Cunis on Law Nine, and then Hula She Kill. And after you finish drawing it, pointing to each, you're getting the children to read it with you and tell you what's happening in each of them. Then choosing, you know, different ones on it and asking children to tell you what happened in each of those. And if you want, you can do the story Drimarash back to front, start at the end and go back to the beginning. And then invite the children uh, to take out a pen or a copy book, a piece of paper, and uh, draw it as you go along and you tell the story very uh, slowly there are not that many illustrations for them to do but they have their own version of it then in their copy book and with the person beside them they can tell the story to them then the final activity <clears throat> I've said three parts of the story you could use four if you want is where you print out or uh, yeah it's probably better actually if you do print them out so we're saving paper but if you print out four pictures from the book or three based on those four scenes and give them to four children who are standing in front of the class. And then you uh, go through what's happening in each of the pictures, but the children are not in the right order. So as you're going through it, hmm, and you have to physically move one child to get the child into the correct order for it. So children can have a lot of fun in standing, you know, moving around. Is the story right yet? No, we have to move around again. And you're just reinforcing those four events that happen and the language that they're going to come across as soon as they open the book. And after that, the children know they have the gist of what's going to happen. They can join in with you when you come to those lines and they're ready to read all about Meep. And after you finished Meep, uh, great news, there's actually a sequel. You can read Meep August Sleeping and move on to the further adventures uh, that Meep and Leaping uh, have as they go along. For older readers, it's really helpful for them to have their own uh, strategies if they encounter a word that they don't know or a phrase they're not familiar with. And I got these charts and she laid more from Jackie De Bruyne, and they work really well. Um, and as a class, if you want children to get used to using them, you can decide, um, we're going to go through them each. Um, on the first day, we'll take Sui Gare. We're going to see um, if that helps us by finding the clues. Like, if we don't know what the word Achtron is, well, can we look at the pictures? What, what's hidden? Here at Pai 
and you'll see it's these little um, aliens at the bottom of the picture. Um, <clears throat> once they have a experience of using all of these different types of strategies, then they can choose which one um, is the best one for them um, as they're going through. And then they're ready to read really anything. So you can choose um, great books for the classroom. There are ones in Schaefer's Good done by genre across the four stages, which I think would map onto the um, stages in Northern Ireland as well. Um, in the early years, there's a lot on picture books in the um, first and class, first and second class kind of um, middle uh, range. Um, there are some picture books and shorter stories. In the next stage, there are lots of nonfiction, which are accessible for uh, children. And then in the later older classes, there are more novels, but shorter novels, uh, first of all. And of course, CBI needs a, a good mention here because they're really good um, uh, reading guides that have been put together by theme. I saw one on sustainability advertised there the other day. Um, and this one, Killer Tank ELA, is all about Irish language books. And it's great because there are ideas for the kind of vocabulary you would need to teach before you um, do any of those stories with the children. So they're a great resource and it's good to keep an eye on everything that's coming out from CBI because it's really up to date with all of the books that are coming out. So um, you can also buy them if you want your own copy um, from any of the Irish language publishers or any good bookshops that stock um, high quality Irish books as well. And these are all in the PowerPoint for you afterwards. I'm going to focus in now on a couple of books that are recent enough in Irish and they help us learn about the world that we live in. And that was my second message here today, Carrie Lauren Gwagelin, Fulham, Queen Dow and More. And the first one I've chosen is this one, uh, Cree and Charlie and Roth. <clears throat> it is the Irish version of Love Makes a Family, isn't it? Love Makes a Family, I think so. Um, and what's lovely about this book uh, is that every single page starts with is Gra A. So um, as the children are going through, they can read that for you. It's grow a, it's grow a, and you finish the sentence for them. It's grow a, and you go through it. And it's a good book because it just has representation of what families look like um, in Ireland today. Um, and there's lots of ideas then of what you could do after you read this story together. Choose your favourite scene from it and do a freeze frame of what's happening in that. The whole class is grow a, as they watch the group performing one of the scenes from it. Or the children add in their own uh, pages to the story and the whole class starts is grow a and then we put in a picture of Connell's family doing whatever Connell's family likes to do or Roshan's family doing whatever they like to do afterwards. So that's a really, really nice book um, and it's very accessible to children at the early stages of primary education um, um, especially even if they don't have Irish at home or you know in the community. The second one I'm going to talk about is the first, um, uh, sorry, yeah, no, it is the first book it's by somebody uh, from the traveling community for travelers as well. There are books in Irish um, uh, about travelers, but this one is, is written from the perspective of somebody who is a traveler. So it's a really nice, um, it's a really nice way to understand um, the rich storytelling tradition that's part of the traveler culture. And I was very lucky that the author um, had a look at this resource before I finished it. And one of the suggestions he made, it was very interesting for me was, to take out one of the first questions that I had put in first. Um, and the question I had was based on just at the beginning of the story, it says, this is, you know, this is something that happened to me. I wasn't invited along to a party and my dad told me this story about the slug and the snail on, on Druchlin and Shelida. And I had added in a question at the beginning saying, how do you know um, it's a true story? And he and said, actually in traveler tradition, all of our stories are based on the truth. So that's pretty irrelevant. So you need to have that kind of cultural knowledge before you look at a story like this with the class. So that's a nice thing to know that actually everything is rooted in 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 uh, real real life, even if uh, we're talking about animals or or insects in this story. And it's a gorgeous story in English and in Irish. It's available um, about this friendship between such a slug and snail who have a different way of living in the world and have to learn about each other and they have to kind of learn about themselves as they go through. Um, and the illustrations are fabulous. There's really great whole page spreads of prey harm coming in um, and these two little insects um, setting off um, on their merry way around the world. So I, I love that book. The next one is a nonfiction one um, because there, it's great if you are interested in a particular topic just to pick up a book in Irish about it. So this one has lots of interesting facts about 
um, animals and fish and the different kinds of sports and the kind of things that they do um, in the water and that. Um, and it's a good springboard for learning about other animals or even like the Olympics um, and different things that humans can do um, as well uh, to rival the dramatic kind of feats of the animals and fish and mammals uh, in this story. And the final one then for the upper end of primary school is a Mahatir Derenach. And this is written by Patricia Ford, who's our current laureate. Mm. Laureate Nogue. And if you didn't think there was any other reason we could despise uh, Cromwell anymore, it actually turns out he tried to get rid of wolves at some point. So this story is about that Mahatir Derenach. And it's a really nicely written story. The, the opening part of it is quite dramatic and scary. Patricia has a very good way of creating a scene. Um, and as you go through it, there's a lovely story about the main character and her mum and respect for her mum, knowing about living a life and uh, ways of healing and things like that. So it's a really good story. It's very good dialogue in it as well. And it's quite accessible with different um, illustrations that happen um, and dotted throughout it. So each of those kinds of stories that tell us about the world um, are suited to this activity I have here, the ABC chart or the KWL, I suppose, in English which is where you look at things you already know, what you'd like to know about, and then at the end, reflect on what you have learned. So picking up any nonfiction book, or if you want to learn more about that period in history, you can use the story as your springboard to um, learn more about that era or about the people who are mentioned in it. And that kind of brings me into the next, um, the next area, which is about critical literacy, that children are reading and they're kind of thinking at a deeper level of, what the story is about, who wrote it, and um, what is being represented in the story in front of them. So I've added in this section is um on if we literally critical uh, in Schaefer and Skull because it's it's uh, now a key part of the primary language curriculum. Um, and I think for any language learners um, that you you think about the voices that are represented or not represented and the context that are or aren't represented in, in any story that you read. Um, so I'll go through some of the activities that are in this section and um, in uh, Schiff and Skull. So the first one is to look at this, just what I said, the voices and experiences that are represented in stories. And I have a few kind of bank questions that you could ask regardless of whatever book you're reading. Who told this story? Why was it told now? Is there any other version available? Who benefits from telling this story? And was anybody left out? Tenants. So maybe Perel Cromwell didn't get a look in, in in the last story. You could think about ways that you could have had a you know a, a better overview of history at that time. The um Bailages or folklore in Irish, they're really good stories to start with because children likely know the stories in English or in another language. Um, and they've been retold so many times over the years, particularly this latest series of the Fatha. You can see at the start of it um, what was behind the retelling of it. Um, and see, is it different or similar to any other version you know in English, in Irish, or in another language? And if you were going to retell it again, is there anything you would change further? Cost, Sheer and Clog is looking a little bit at the context um, in which the story is written. So every writer chooses some point to start their story. Um, and you can ask them to focus in on that, to read the first part of the story. Where does it start? What time is it? What time of the year is it? What, what year is it set in? And then turning back the clock a little bit, just to see what happened just before that, that maybe made the character afraid or angry or sad. And can you think of anything, any contextual information that might tell you about why they acted in this way when you started the story? Looking at where the uh, story is set and thinking, do you know anything about that country or that place or that town? And um, is it similar or different to where you're from? And finding it on the map and uh, seeing how far or how close it is from where you live. And then thinking, right, if, if that story had actually been set in Glasnevin or Rathfarnham, um, would, would the story be the same? Would the weather have been the same? Would that have changed anything? Would the landscape be the same? Would there have been the same facilities um, available to the characters? Um, and do you think that would have changed anything about the story? Because we all are influenced by the environment that we happen to be in when, when certain events unfold. And we're not fixed, and neither are the characters in the stories. So this, the characters could change. Everybody has the potential to change. So if you see out the three kind of aged um, men there um, at the bottom of the screen, thinking about the same character, 
when they're 10 years old? What about when they were 30 years old? Or what about when they're 60 years old? Do you think any change would have happened to them? Where would they live now? Would they have the same friends? Would they behave in the same situation in the same way? Um, or do they get pre on that? And that word in Irish, like wiser or older, is there anything that would change about the personality or how they react to situations? So coming back to a scene in a story, particularly if it's kind of a troublesome scene and thinking, is there anything that we could have changed about that? If it was set somewhere else or if somebody had come to that situation with a bit more maturity or life experience or just a different type of experience? Um, there, these um, activities are in on Buscalera Luna when you want to kind of go a bit deeper about certain characters because children's literature doesn't shy away from horrible characters or ones that do things that we wouldn't really approve of um, and it's it's not that you want children to never encounter these kinds of characters but you want to be able to handle it responsibly when you're talking about them so the profile character profile um, is, is a good way to do this to first of all get to grips with this character what's their viewpoint like so in this story booba and um, there's a gang of kids there they look a little bit um you're probably a bit afraid to, to run into them but you get to know those characters and the things that they like and more to them than just what you meet in this scene and then the hot seating of the character gives you a chance to ask them some more questions to find out uh little things about their lives or their motivations and then um changing the character a little bit so on La Hoopla they're twin this is something I've done with students before where on one side of the page they do it the character profile and um, every piece of evidence we have from the story what we know about this person where they're from what they like everything like that and then the other side we imagine they have a twin who's totally different and they do the same profile but with the opposite adjectives and traits for this person and then when they think about that person who's very different how would they have responded in the same situation if this La Hoopla had been there? And the final one, and actually this is the one we spoke about before, if that person was older, in 10 years' time, in 20 years' time, in 30 years' time, would the story change in, in any kind of a way? And um, in some of the stories, like in this one, uh, in Luba, there's some not nice things that they do to animals. So you don't want to just leave children with this, like, you know, disturbing scene or else, or in any way, like think that it's it's something you would tolerate. Um, but if you want to get them to look a little bit closer about why people did it and what they could have done differently, the hot seating is a good idea. Like I, I said before about asking the character different questions. The Korla Kairoch or Kusan Kunshiasa, the conscience alley is, is a good way. It's a drama methodology where children think up of, uh, think up maybe a piece of advice in pairs and think of a piece of advice that they would give to the main character or whoever maybe was uh, in this scene and they line up in two lines in the classroom and somebody takes on the role of the character maybe somebody who's on the hot seat and as they're walking between those two uh, lines they listen to the different types of advice that they're hearing and then at the end reflect back to the class the different pieces of advice they've heard and the class can decide or the individual can decide which piece of advice do you think is useful uh, in this situation and then return again to the scene and see what would have been uh, different and the final one there Kasha and Kilbis when we spoke about before where you, you turn back the clock um, and change maybe something that was about to, to happen we're really good storytellers I think we're quite uh, uh, famous for that really the world over and we want to get children uh, ready to tell their own stories and using the stories that they read and come across um, as a springboard again for their own creative um, pursuits. So there's a lovely uh, scheme in Great Hut Schools called Soar High Tory. I think it's lovely. They invite in really articulate, I suppose, people from the community to speak to the children. So somebody might come in and know loads about bees or you know, something in the community, and the children get to sit and listen to the Soar High Tor and how Jesh Veilach they are. There's lots of ways to find Soar High or or Soar Lehori. And one of the ways is to look at the people who are reading Scale on Lay, which are all available on YouTube, and listen to their prosody and how they read things with emotion and engage the reader. So you could choose a Scale on Lay each day at the beginning of the day or as children reaching their lunch or what about as a Barwalia even, um, that you listen to and watch this story with somebody at home. And um, some people have lovely voices as well, you know, for the radio. And there are so many stories um, on SoundCloud, on Goo and Futa Fata and different uh, published houses too. So if you just prefer the sort of podcast experience, you can put one on in the background um, as you're listening 
or as you're maybe you know doing art or you're eating your lunch or something like that or in the car if you, if you just want to listen to a story in the background they're nice ways to get used to how it is to tell an engaging story um, and it doesn't have to be very very dramatic some people actually have a quieter way of taking the podcast kind of sphere of just engaging in a more intimate kind of way somebody in the story that they're telling and then we want children to really start to hone their craft so um, you want to know what makes a good story and picture books are actually a really good way to start that because they tend to have the three act structure that you see in all Hollywood rom-coms and things like that and even with older children if you get them to look at picture books particularly the picture books by Foot the Father that follow this um, three act play usually and um, finding the first scene do we meet the main character what do we get to know about this person is everything okay usually not there's some kind of Jack Russell do plan and um, then you want to see where, where the main character has to actually face um, this challenge and what they what they do. And then in the end, the resolution, what is the character like at the end? Is he, is he or she totally the same? Are they totally the same? Or is something changed along the way? And once you understand that three-act structure, it's a good way to start writing your own stories. So you could give out some picture books to children and get them, try and find where they hate, usually the first or second page, and try and find where there's a casa yoga or where the character has to engage with something later in the story and then go to the end of the story and see what has changed. And when we want to hone our craft, it's good to just read good books. And um, so there are lots of them out there, in especially all the ones that are, are in this resource. But I've just chosen Bertie Brookoff because it's uh, they're short, snappy, little funny stories. And what I particularly like about this um this book is that the, the blurb at the back tells you a lot about what's going to happen in the story, gets interested in wanting to read it. So this activity, Blasha Blurba, where one person reads out the blurb and the other person has to guess what's on the cover or what's going to happen in the story um, and then see if they're right. And ooh, there's a lot of alliteration. There typically is for um, the names of characters in Irish and they can be great ways to name your character. Think of an adjective that describes them and kind of start with the same sound. Uh, Donal Donna is great as well. And uh, some of the stories, kind of more scary stories in Irish, have the either have a blurb at the back or they have a warning or um, a message to the person who's picking up the book about how you'll feel reading this. So you could give children a few examples of these kind of books that tell you uh, what the reading experience is going to be like. And then you write your own, find a post-it and put it on the back of whatever book you've just been reading. Ma le e shan ma. No, pyok su se shan loi rach ma. And the children can, can finish the end of that sentence based on um, whatever they think uh, would get somebody interested in reading this book. These are different ways to, to respond to the story. And as you start to make the story your own, because um, the story might just be your your springboard to write your own story afterwards and you can focus on something and then change it a little bit. So these roll cards are things that you can cut up and you can choose as a class to do one together, like Harry Potter and Hagana, no, in Agana, you're going to choose one page or one scene and then pause and get the children to think about what, what is the person thinking right now? Because we often see the dialogue right now, but we don't know what was going through their head at that time. Uh, do a picture of this piece, particularly if there's like a third person narrative in it, to, to see if there's no illustration, can you put in your own? Can you think of some questions for the next person? Can you cross out the last line or the first line and put in something different yourself? And the other one up there, I'm Shagapur, you can do that in any kind of detective work, find, find evidence for something, find this particular grammar point, whatever you want to do. Um, and it's good as a class to have a chance to try all of these different role cards uh, throughout the week. And then maybe on Friday or for over a while, the children get to choose whichever one they want to do. So they have had experience of using a range of different responses to it, and then they choose their own one. If you just start with, you can choose whatever you want to do. You know, people might just always choose to do the picture and you want to encourage children to think about the story in a few different ways. The, this triathlon now I'm going to use as a as a um, kind of a model for looking either at characters or looking at the development of the story. So as with Bertie Brookock, his poor lad's always in, in trouble there. There he has a big painful finger and his other thumb. Um, and if you start to uh, profile what Bertie's like, he's quite similar in all these stories, get himself into trouble. 
and finding adjectives maybe within the text, first of all, that describe him or other things that you know um, about him. And then this triumphant um, shows you what something's like at the beginning, after a while, and at the end. And if you can start with these uh, starter sentences, Egan Poo's thought in, choose one of your adjectives, Thresh Tamil Irene Shay, whatever, Agus Egg and Dere Thoshe. And showing again this kind of arc of the character changes that can happen for Alberti. And in the middle, you can think about the things that caused those changes, like when he met this character or when he went wherever. The same idea um, you can use to look at the events in the story. So I've chosen this book, um, The Black Three. So there's two of these that I know of, The Black Three Zombies and Black Three Taisha. And these children are kind of tasked with finding out the mystery um, of something. This one here is about a ghost. So at the start, what's the problem? Not unlike the three-act play structure we're talking about. What's, what's the problem confronting the character at the beginning? After a while, what do they do? And at the end, what's the resolution? Have they solved the crime or not? And then in the middle of that tree of time, you can think about the characters that helped along the way, the clues that they found out, the people they met, and the stuff that um, helped them move along to the end of the story. And in each of these um, stories that you're doing, you'll come across really nice phrases that the writer has put in deliberately to keep our attention or to describe something in a really good way. And I think this activity from Mac and McGann is really nice, brothness vocal, where you present um, a word or a phrase that you've been really taken with in a text to somebody else, and you give them ownership of using it in their next story. So he, he does it where he hands out little cards with, you know, a word usually that's kind of not really been used in Irish as much anymore. And if, if you're interested in any of those kind of words in, in that, though, one of those two books, 32 Words for Field or Listen to the Land Speak, you come across beautiful ways of describing and encapsulating something in Irish that mightn't be there in another language. But you can equally find those kind of words in terms of phrases day to day in the Irish books that um, are available in the classroom or written by contemporary um writers. And now we're going to move on to the way that we read, um, and that's different uh, for lots of different people. So Leamwit, er, er Valley Aixin, we all like to read in a slightly different way. Roisin will recognise this because I've taken it from her own good work there. Some people like to read as part of a book club uh, to make it more of a social event. And this is a brilliant project that was done and is being done by COG. Um, where children have exposed to a certain number of books that have been um, chosen by, by the fabulous people at COG. And they um, have their own little book to, um, to go through that reading journey and to think about how they feel about reading. So these fear no break up or true or false questions, first of all, just to get an idea of what they like or don't like in reading. And there are other activities in it to, to think back in a book they read, to give it how many stars out of five stars. Um, and then there are support materials for teachers if they want to do um, any of these uh, books in the classroom. Um, I think I saw Clough na Grena is in it. So um, that's a nice one that's just come out um, by Jackie DeBroom, who did the strategy later off earlier on. Um, so children know about the new books that are coming out or Aumamu and can read them and discuss them with, with people in their class. So they're reading it to be part of this kind of social activity. And it is a harder thing nowadays when there are so many hobbies available to children to make reading in Irish as attractive um, as possible. Now, Katrin, I'm not sure if you know this resource, Lay Inish from Unpaulshain It. Um, I only came across it. Oh, you know it already. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's almost like an encyclopedia. It's just a collection of all of these articles written in really child-friendly friendly language, but kind of everything. So there's ones about animals and school and and um, you know sustainability and things like that so you can choose whatever theme you're interested in click on it and there's likely to be two or three articles written directed at children about that and you can it's a good one for like non-fiction especially so you can read things regularly in irish and um, at an appropriate level you know for children and um, i mentioned sorry i, I forgot that i mentioned the last time there also are uh, good websites with Bailey just for Irish. So the, the Lay Lay Lat website or the Ask with Ireland website is also good if you want to um if you want to read different stories and folklore connected to Ireland. Um, but these next two I'm going to talk about are um when you want to read fluently a story and you're reading it so that you can read it out loud. Um, and they all have a nice rhythm in them and rhyme. This first one, Kinney Norris and the Tree Bear, I'm sure it's one a lot of people know already about Goldilocks and Tree, tree 
uh, bears. And in this retelling by um, Anini Glynn, there's a good rhythm as you're going through it. So, Hanni Kinni Nor, Hanni Shi and Shach, Dusko Shi and Baris, Agus Hui Shi is Shach. Very easy to act out the, the things that are happening there. Also, very easy to put a rhythm to it or a beat to it. Hanni Kinni Nor, Hanni Shi and Shach, Dusko Shi and Baris, Agus Hui Shi is Shach. For anyone who's working with younger children, the high frequency words in Irish is Shach and Amach and Shi, and those words are part of it. So, it's good for children to see these words. Uh, written down as well and be able to use them in their own speech. The next is um, Osan the Beheji, which is a lovely, um, lovely one about insects. Um, and they all get invited into this um, insect hotel. And the kind of curfaw or chorus from uh, in every single one is Falter of the Hum, Falter of the Hurry, Falter of the Stock in Osan the Beheji. So you can start by um, Putting in the names of children in the class. And um, Falter wrote the Roshi, Falter wrote the Hari, Falter wrote the Stach in Ostan, Nevehedi. And where I've done two, do, three, Kahar, it's three class before you move on to the next person. So say we did Connell and Roshi in this one. Falter wrote the Connell, Falter wrote the Hari, Falter wrote the Stach in Ostan, Nevehedi. Falter wrote the Roshi, and we go on like that. So it's a way of just going around. Um, including people. When I did this with our students, and I should have probably more attention span because they're older, but they, they found it a little bit hard to concentrate on each of the new characters that was coming in on each page. So doing it first with them, where they were happy and ready to come in with the curve on every single page, uh, got them ready before we, we read the book, and then they were able to join in. I could read the first verse, and then they would read the, the next bit after it. Uh, other ways to play around with the sounds um, and the, the um, pieces that you, of literature that you've just had are kind of shaking it up a little bit and reading it at different speeds or in different voices. So it's very easy to do all of these activities with a pack of cards. And when you take out the club, you say it really, really slowly. Falter of the Hummel, Falter of the Hurry. And when the heart comes out, Falter of the Hummel, Falter of the Hurry, you want to be quite angry when you see Sparita. Butter out the column, and then um, and do it with um with the diamond shapes in a very happy voice. So it's just about playing around with the language, and particularly for children of any kind of uh, challenges with pronunciation, if they haven't heard these before, this is a nice informal way to get used to the lines of it, um, and they don't realise that they are saying them over and over, and that they're getting a lot of practice. Equally, you can do uh, with the dice. Um, and number one maybe is the saying it really fast or saying it really slow. Number two is a different one. And you go through each of these um, so that you've got lots of lots of um, ways to practice it in lots of different ways. And this ultimately leads up to your slam filiatha, which is where you choose whatever poem or verse um, or curfa in any of the stories that you've had and you perform it in whichever way that you um, have really enjoyed doing. So I'm going to end now um, with this uh, quote, quote I use I think in almost all my webinars that I got from Paul Murray about the importance of reading and how it connects to everything else that we do. Reading and literacy is just so crucial for Irish, for minority languages, so that children can have contact with the language from day to day and so that they can access the really rich storytelling that we have in Irish. And should they mohiola refresh? If anyone has any any comments or stories or anything like that, you're welcome to contact me. Gurmila Mahavis. Gurmila Mahavis, Claire, Bishan Arais or Fad. Does anybody have any any questions before we go? Kathleen, no. Roisin, no. No, all good. Thank you so much. Mila Burfus, Claire, Mahu, Mahavan. Um, I, I might actually just uh, throw a question if if that's all right. Um, one of the things that we that we see in sort of trends is that the um, the amount that uh, kids read tends to drop off in sort of sixth class. Um, yeah. How do you how do you counteract that age specifically, uh, or is there is there anything you you change uh, to yeah, I, I think nonfiction is, is great for older kids and um, when when they're kind of fifth and sixth class and some of the books like Amber and the Heron and um, they're good books 
and um, for that because they're short kind of snappy things and the children come away knowing something that they didn't know before so non-fiction is really good for that the slam filiata where they can return to stuff they know from other uh from other year groups like when they're in infants and that that they can perform them in slightly different ways really good uh some schools give the older kids the job of teaching reading or reading to younger kids so then they have a purpose so they um, have to read all of the picture books and make sure they're saying it in a really good voice because they're going to go in and read it to the children in infants and that's a nice way um, and then the other thing I've heard from teachers is about digital literacy that's how children like to learn about the world to communicate so giving children responsibility for maybe the school newsletter or the school blog where they're choosing, so we are doing projects about whatever, and we're going to share information about that uh, with parents and with other classes. So they're not only the readers, but they're the writers as well. Brilliant. That that sounds fantastic. Um, that's yeah, that's that's brilliant. Uh, and again, um, it, any any final notes that you'd like to leave us off on, or uh, yeah, Russian Kathleen said you didn't have any questions. Um, I just sorry add on to what Claire was saying there. Um, it's not as Gaelica, but we have found that manga is getting some of the older children really interested. Just the concept of reading backwards and stuff and all. So yeah. a lot are picking up a good bit in our school. Just can't get in in Irish yet, but it's better than nothing. That's Very fantastic. Yeah. Are, are graphic novels popular in Irish with your class or your school? Not really, no. Not really, yeah. We tried it, but no. I don't know if it's just the topics of them or what, but they're not really enjoying them too much. Okay. Fair yeah, there's, yeah, there's a few sort of new ones uh, coming out as well at the minute that um, Dal and Aaron are working on a lot of graphic novels. Uh, they're one of the publishers, they're, they're based in, in Wales that do uh, translations of um, uh, a lot of French uh, stories. And... Um, they they have a series called Natural Theory, which is uh, kind of um I would say directed that's sort of like ten plus uh, kind of age group um where it's about uh the so the official translation is the warrior shepherdesses uh, oh, and it's th this mix of um like old uh, Celtic folklore uh, but it's these um. Uh, three young characters in it, and uh, the the lead is a it's a female lead as well. So, uh, it's great in terms of representation on that front. Cool. So uh, might be might be one to try there. Um, as well as that, uh, if uh, if anyone is looking for even more uh, recommendations for books beyond the, I think it was sixty five. You said was in the uh in the guide that you mentioned there. We uh, recently released Give Lara Gaelga for Shachtan Gaelga, which is a hundred. Uh, books that have been published uh, roughly in the last 10 years but they're all still in print uh, and um, basically if you want to if you want to have a look at that that that's on our website as well so um, so that's all all there as a as a resource for everyone too that's brilliant brilliant okay uh, I might stop the recording there if that's all right uh, and yeah thank you very much for coming thank you very much for Magus.